very much a part of it. Uh, we've got an amazing lineup of people attending. We weren't sure if we were going to get a couple of people that we'd strong armed into, into listening in or what. I think this, we're due to about 50 or 60 people. Uh, we've got a big talent from GSK. Thank you for joining us. Mates of mine here in Sydney. Uh, Dulux, Paul and Stephanie. GWF in Sydney. Coles in Melbourne. Kate Bruce, Hard Hat. Paul Harris, I hope you're online. You're another, another creative. I want to hear from you. I think you're a mate of, of another Paul's. Uh, and a big turnout from Arnott and Asahi. So wonderful group of people, and I'm sure all very creative. Um, so I think we're set for a really good session. Um, if you haven't already typed something in the chat box, please just say hi from, and then insert the city that you're in, or the suburb you're in. We just want to check that everybody's okay and, and really um, able to contribute. So let's see a load of messages in the chat box. Hi, I would write hi from Sydney, which is where I am. That's brilliant. Rose Bay, East Bentley. I don't know East Bentley. And uh, Nick, <laughs> I'm going to put you on mute. Great to have you with us, though, Nick. Hi, Matt from Singapore. Thanks for joining us, mate. Fabulous. We're now global, officially. Uh, Paul Harris, thanks for coming, mate. There's your uh, fellow photographer, Chris. Oh, Paul, I've seen some of your work. It's fabulous. I'm, I'm slightly intimidated to have another photographer on this <laughs> They're going to catch me out having the wrong aperture or doing something wrong. <laughs> I, always think, I always describe myself as an artist first and a photographer second because I think my photography technique is dreadful. So the real photographers catch me out with the, the way I abuse cameras and so on. But I've got a camera here. How Hello. Hi, Troy. Thanks for joining us. So that's great. We've got Gold Coast. We've got uh, Noel from Sydney. Thank you. Um, do you like the poopies? <laughs> I, yeah, we do, Samantha. I'm not quite sure what they are, but I like them. Poppies. The poppies. poppies. Uh, the poppies for Anzac Day. Of course. I, ha I can't see them. You're on, uh, uh, the other suggestion I have, actually, is that everybody switches to speaker view uh, rather than gallery view. There's probably so many people on this webinar. If you have it on gallery view, it will all be tiny, and it'll do my ego and hopefully Paul Fairweather's ego a load of good to have us as the kind of the main... Uh, people you speak. So I pop it to speak of you. I pop your microphone on mute um, and please ask lots of questions as we get, get stuck in. Uh, I'll just admit one more people into the session. Um, so um, let's get, get started on art, storytelling and implications for business. And a big thank you to Paul for partnering, or well, us partnering together um, to put ourselves out there a bit and talk about art and creativity and how it applies to business. We've done these sessions as quite private sessions before, and this is the first time we've kind of gone public. Um, so we'll see how we go. Um, Paul, I know that you're a Archibald finalist. I know that you've spoken at TED. T tell us a little bit about your business, and then tell us a bit about your art. I, I, I know bits of it, but I'd love to hear some more. Okay, well, thanks, thanks Chris, and thanks you also for uh, joining me in this, in this little uh, adventure. Uh, I am um, basically, by profession, I'm an architect, um, although the last few years I've become a thought leader around uh, creativity. So I help um, teams think differently. I help businesses solve problems and come up with ideas. But ultimately, I'm trying to inspire people to, to create um, a better outcome for themselves, uh, a better future for everybody. Um, and that creativity may be uh, to do with you know, artistic um, or an applied creativity in, the, in their work. So that's what I do now, and as Chris said, uh, I'm, a, um, I'm, a, I'm an artist. Uh, I've uh, painted most of my life, although the last 10 years uh, with young children, um, and I used it as a bit of an excuse, and really it was really just a long procrastination. But over the last couple of years, I've been really getting back into it. Um, this year, I've been doing a daily uh, blog of a, uh, or an Instagram post of a watercolour, which is now turning into watercolour and stories. And so... When, when I had the chance to meet up with Chris a couple of months ago, we really connected um, because I realise now that I'm actually a storyteller and I failed English at school and, um, and I never realised the stories that I had to tell. So, so it's, uh, I really want to thank everyone to come along to listen today and, and hope we can uh, learn something or inspire something. Just again, reminder, please uh, put any questions in the chat box. Uh, maybe if you put them in um, capitals so we can see them because there's a fair bit happening in the, 
asked in the chat box. Um, so uh, yeah, so what, what really attracted to me was, uh, to Chris was about his storytelling. And I'd really like you now, Chris, to uh, give us a little bit of information and history about yourself and, uh, and you know, and your, and your storytelling. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a bit of a corporate refugee. I'm one of those people that kind of worked my way up the career ladder in big organisations, uh, in brand management and innovation kind of roles. And then I uh, set up my own business uh, about five years ago, which is all about helping people create, capture and communicate great ideas. And I, it's inspired by the fact that so many great ideas in business uh, fall between people's fingers or people don't feel they, ha they know how to contribute what they've got and it means so much value is lost. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to give back to the world, helping people be more creative at work. And, and so storytelling is central to one of the, to, to what I teach and what I coach people in. I mean, uh, for what's worth, I have these little training programs, one on storytelling, one on workshopping, a great way of generating ideas through workshops. And I've written a little book on, on creativity at work, how to be creative in the white heat of critical evaluation where business people all so good at kind of making ideas die. This is how to protect the poor little things and get bring them to, uh, bring them to market. Um, and for many years, I've been a part-time artist and I've kept those two worlds very separate. Um, I'm a digital artist. I, my camera is my main tool and Photoshop and so on. Um, and for the last five years, I've been taking a photograph every single morning of one beach. It's Balmoral Beach, is my local beach. I go down there usually at dawn and um, try and force myself to do something creative. Um, this morning, I was down there this very morning. I'll show you the image that I, I captured this morning. Where is it? Here we go. Um, there we go. That, that's this morning. About 6.30 a.m., beautiful sunrise. Can, can anyone see that? Um, right. And it's, it's, today was easy. There was this pretty sunrise and that gorgeous silhouette of a figure about to jump into the sea. But often it's tough. The light might be flat or I'm feeling tired. And it's a, it's a, for me, it's a wonderful laboratory. It's a way of saying, well, what, is, how, what does it take to be creative when you're not in the perfect mood or when things aren't going your way? So I feel it's been a wonderful laboratory for understanding creativity and applying those lessons into the world of work, which we'll come on to talk a bit more about. Um, but I think, Paul, that's what reunites you and I. We're both passionate about people being more creative in the world of work. We have this side to us, which is more artistic, and we are both exploring how to bring that art into, uh, bring those art learnings and perhaps the art itself into the world of work. Um, Paul, I, I, that, see, that raises really one of the first questions I had for you, which is, um, I think you as an enormously successful artist, I know you sell a lot of your work, but how do you draw the line about where, how much of your art you bring into work? Uh, is it just the, the learnings about creativity that you apply in work, or is it the art itself? Uh, so tell us more about your art and where it, what its role is in the workplace. Um, look, thanks, Chris. And it, it's interesting, it's a challenge. I suppose when I started this, it was very much about um, my art was my art and you know, my speaking, teaching, training was, was a separate thing. But I, I am, I'm really wanting to uh, aggregate these things to make them um, the, the same, you know, one and the same. So like, one of the things I've been doing over the last six months is I've been um, changing all my slides and doing drawings uh, or using my own photos. So not using any stock photos, uh, having, having my paintings as, as my slideshow. Uh, so that's, that's one way. Um, but it's also, you know, what I've also started doing was, you know, in people that I'm um, <clears throat> uh, uh, teaching and mentoring, actually. Ah, oh. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Sorry, that was oh, there were a couple of people joining, and I, I think I muted you, Paul. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so what, what I what I what I do now is I'm really you know experimenting about how how to aggregate um, this, and so I, I've had this uh, daily Instagram post that I've been doing, and as that evolves, it's now evolving into some storytelling and some observations about 
about life and things like that. So if you're interested, that that Instagram is uh, everything with a K. Um, so everything, uh, and and that's that's what I do. But what I find, just going back to the, what I was saying about uh, you know getting people to do some art, it really is. There's three main lessons that I find. One is overcoming a fear, and it's the fear uh, that comes with all creativity, which is about stepping into the unknown, creating something new. It's genetically programmed into us that we will be uh, afraid. The other one is a belief. You know, there's just a belief that a lot of us have um, that you know I can't do that, and it's something that happened at, at puberty when you know we weren't encouraged or we were discouraged. Um, I'd be lucky I had encouraging parents, so I kept my art. But you know, the thing that I did fall away from was uh, singing and acting uh, in comedy, which is another story, for maybe for another session, Chris. But uh, I, I've gone back to that recently, so I understand uh, the belief thing. Um, because really, you know, people say I can't paint. Well, you know, if you pick up a brush, put it in the tub, put a line on a, you know, a mark on a, on a canvas, that is painting. Um, you know, subjectively, it might not necessarily be a great painting and you might sell it for any money, but that is painting. But the last thing and the most important part of it is about seeing. Um, I have this piece, which I call um, a sea change. And what it is, is just, excuse me, I get my whiteboard very low uh, tech here. So we basically, we start with being reactive and going from reactive to creative is a sea change. So if we get rid of the C there and move it to here, we have creative. Yeah. Um, so Love. That, 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 that's a bit of a gimmick, but the reality is um, being creative uh, is, is a sea change. You know, it's actually, it's looking at things differently. And, and if you learn to draw, there's a fantastic book by a lady called Betty Edwards called Drawing on the Right Hand Side of the Brain. She goes through a whole process about how you look at things differently. Um, Dan Pink has covered this and linked it to sort of engineering minds and things like that. But it's, it's a really uh, incredible uh, process to go through that if you, you know, and this morning, um, I, I don't have it here, but this morning, my, my daily post, which I haven't done yet, haven't done the story, um, was, a, was an onion. <laughs> um, and so I've done some, some, you know, some work on, work on that. Uh, but it's just, um, uh, I've lost my train of thought now. Well, uh, I'm, it raised the question, uh, just, to, you're doing a, an image every single day. Yeah. What, why an onion? What, what inspired you to choose an onion today? Well, I, I've decided what I want to do is I want to get uh, a theme for a week. And we're midweek, so I can't start a theme now. And so I want to do hats and I want to do car of shoes and I want to do, uh, you know, um, knickknacks that you know, I had from my parents and things like that. So I was just looking around and over the years, I used to do a lot of still life painting. Um, and uh, I just thought, you know, I was looking at the onion. I just, again, you know, with that artist, I went, my God, that's, that translucency is amazing. Could I, could I capture that uh, with watercolour? But I, I had this uh, thing, a, a great coach of mine, um, who I call Kimasabi, and he calls me Tonto. It's the, the, the order of things. Uh, he says that you can't become what, you, uh, what you're not. You can only, sorry, you can't become what, you're, what you are. You can only unbecome what you're not. Uh, and it's taken me years to sort of understand this, but it really is, uh, you know, a thing about unpeeling the layers, you know, the, the mask that we put up. So that's going to be the basis of my post today and a, a bit of a history of the Red Onion. Uh, I'm learning so many things because every day I pick something and then look at Wikipedia and I, you know, the most amazing one, and I just, as a totally aside, I did one on uh, Roselle, we make Roselle a jam from. The, the Wikipedia post on Roselle is incredible. The, the uses of that plant around the world, you know, it, it's worth a half hour to read. It's fantastic. The Wikipedia anyway, post on Roselle, all right? Ro Roselle, so, and, you know, and the, the post was on Roselle a jam. So, but, yeah, Chris. Uh, you mentioned those three things. You said, the, what, why isn't everyone kind of, what, what is creative about? You said it's about fear, it's about belief, and it's about seeing things differently. I want to just talk a bit about fear, because I think that it, it strikes a real chord with me, and, and I suspect there are two sides to it. One is um, fear of being judged. The act of being creative invites others to go, oh, I like that, or I don't like that, or you're rubbish, or whatever. And I think that's happened to everyone, particularly in schools, when you've tried to do something and they go, oh, well, that's stupid. Uh, so fear of being judged. But your onion story is really interesting because it's about peeling away the ears and, and, and unbecoming what you're not. So it's maybe fear of finding out what's inside. It, 
Is, uh, is that right? Are those two sides to be? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah look, I, 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 I dropped my pen. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, look, so I've, um, I think that's, I think that's right. I, I think it is a, you know, it is a, it is a fear of self. Uh, you know, it's a fear about, you know, being authentic. Uh, and, and I've got to say, you know, in the last, you know, couple of years, I believe I'm becoming more authentic. And, you know, in this sort of last couple of months with this isolation, I believe I'm becoming, you know, even more, again, you know, I think it is about, um, yeah, fear of being judged, but it's probably, you know, fear of, you know, self, self judging or, you know, that stuff as well. Um, so I'm thinking about everybody listening into this. Why don't we start with a question? If, if, if everyone listening in, I mean, I'm hoping you've seen a glimpse of that wealth of creativity that Paul has. Give yourself a mark out of 10. Let's, let's see who we've got online. If, if, if one is, I haven't got a creative bone in my body, and 10 is, I'm a creative genius, I can come up with answers to any question, just pop a number in your chat box to what, how creative you think you are. How, how creative do you feel? 10 is very, one, zero. Oh, we've got an eight from Mandy. Brilliant. We've got a four from Bridget. We'll have to talk to you later. Thanks for that. Six from Samantha. I one. used to be a genius, then I grew up. I kill. Oh, I think we all know what you mean by that. It's having the creativity squished out of you. Eight from Steph. Five, uh, is that a five from Eliza? Oh, Eliza. I don't believe you. Um, Eight, seven, so it's some really mainly high numbers and there's a few fives and fours and some people kind of um, perhaps don't feel that creative. Uh, uh, seven and eight to Nick, um, I'll throw out the nine. I was struck by Ackle's point, you know, I used to be an eight, then I grew up. Paul, tell us about that. Does, are adults not supposed to be creative? Or why, why are we so creative as kids and what went wrong? <laughs> Um, <laughs> look, it's, it, it is about, uh, I believe it's about puberty. You know, we, we, we become uh, very self or more self-aware in puberty. Uh, and in terms of drawing uh, and painting, we're happy, you know, to be uh, in expressionist as, as kids and just, you know, really, you know, impressionist. Uh, but when we become, uh, go through puberty, if we can't make it photographic, you know, we very, become very self-critical. Um, yeah. Then on top of that, there's another layer, which is either lack of support from you know parents and teachers and peers, or worse, you know, uh, you know, a criticism or um, and, and and that normally kills it uh, in uh, in everybody. In my in my own experience, as I said, I was very um, you know it's very creative. Uh, I used to love uh, musicals, and I was in a couple of musicals at school, and uh, and I was in one, and uh, at the dress rehearsal the. The conductor stopped at everything and went, oh, just say, think you, 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 and pointed to me and said, you, mime, you can't sing, you know, in front of the whole cast after three months of, uh, you know, and so it took me about 30 years to go back singing. So, but, you know, and, and so I think we all have a variety of that, um, even if it's, you know, still with supportive people, uh, you know, in the schools, even now, you know, it's about if it's not academic, it's not sport, then it's not encouraged. Yeah. If you're not in the 1%, you know, if you're not going to be that artist uh, that's going to make a huge difference, then, you know, you're encouraged to, you know, focus on your academia because, you know, that's going to be your future. So you know? I'm thinking about everyone listening in and they're going, yeah, you guys are different. You're in this strange world. You're artists. You're okay. You don't have to worry. But I have to, you know, deal with real life and, and I'm, I might be scared to come up with ideas or I've had ideas like you being judged. I tried once and got rejected. Have you got any thoughts on how you can insulate yourself or protect yourself from that vicious comment, like the one you said, you, you can't sing. How could you recover faster than 30 years or something like that? <laughs> well, get older for one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Because uh, you, have, uh, you, have, 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 you have less time. Look, I, I think um, it's a really interesting thing. And, and, and why I do what I do to inspire people is because, you know, I talk about that fear and I, I did this singing thing and I've done some stand-up, uh, which are things that I'm... Actually, stand-up I'm not bad at. Singing I'm crap at, even after eight years of lessons. But uh, the fear in standing up in front of a crowd to sing is the same fear that I have when I press the button uh, to, to post something on Instagram 
you know, it's the same fear when I hang a show and send out an invite. It was the same fear that I had, you know, with the building when we send out the contract to start the building. Uh, so I understand that fear. Um, I think the really, the, the only way to recover it is to, um, you know, is to start in a safe space, you know. So that's why the thing that, you know, I have this thing about, you know, painting a bowl of lemons, um, who gives a heck, you know, I'm an, I'm, only I'm gonna see it, you know, yeah. where we can throw it in the bin or you can take it home and hang it on your wall or you can show people, but you know, I'm not gonna post it. You know, it's around, it's really about people doing this in a, in a safe space. Um, you know, even for myself, and as you say, you know, I had the great privilege uh, to be uh, hung in the Archibald final in 2001. You know, I started this project uh, at the 1st of January this year, but I didn't do my first post until the 1st of February. Uh, and, you know, it took me a month before I went, you know, okay, I'm in the rhythm, I'm gonna do this. But even now, and the great thing, because I, I, you know, once I make a commitment, you know, there's all things in moderation, but moderation. Um, <laughs> once, I, once I start, um, I basically, you know, I, I can keep going. But it is that, it is that thing of, um, you know, even now, the great thing is sometimes the piece is like, ugh, you know, I wouldn't sell that. But, you know, it's seven o'clock at night, you know, I'm not gonna do another one. <laughs> That's it, hit the button, post, you know, and unbelievably quite often the ones that I don't like connect with somebody you know they go oh my god you know that was amazing and you know that one and some I really really like I go what's wrong with you people you know why isn't anyone liking that this is great you know so but Chris I, I, I feel that I'm taking up uh, um, all the time here and I, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested you know like I'm, I'm very interested you know in the fact that you know that you haven't really you know enmeshed you know your photography and and your uh, other stuff and your whole thing is about storytelling and and creativity but i'm really interested you know in how you actually do this storytelling you know for business you know that's one of the things that you know i'm really wanting to understand myself personally and you know, it's a it's a great point i mean we're, we're all on a journey aren't we and i, I i'm going to this idea of bravery and and you're right i've largely kept my art separate from my um business um if, if there are a few clients of mine on, online, um, you might have seen, I, I sometimes send out my, my annual calendar. This is the 2020 calendar with sort of pretty seascapes. Um, but uh, I have a big thank you to GSK. If you're from GSK, you're listening in. Um, Kate Sefton at GSK challenged me to bring some of my photographs into a storytelling workshop. And it's the first time anyone had said, Let's see another side of Chris in action. And I was taken aback and I wasn't sure how to deal with this because it's a bit like saying, uh, you know, I want to see inside you. It's, my art's very personal to me. And I thought, well, it's a great opportunity. So we, we ran a storytelling session, a three-day training gig, and part of it was about those photographs. And I realized, it says, yeah, you know, every picture tells a story that storytelling can be done in many ways. And, and it's strange how powerful an image can be in not only in bringing a story to life, but in learning about storytelling. Uh, one thing I've discovered, for example, in, a, in an image is people find more in an image when there's a sense of space, when there's an absence. I mean, that, that picture I showed from this morning um, has a lot of negative space in it, there's a lot of emptiness. I can't open my own phone at the moment, it's marvelous, isn't it? Um, that, that image, there's a lot of nothing in there. And that, I think, helps people bring themselves into the story. They, they might project themselves, say, I could be that person looking out at that, um, at that beautiful sunrise. So there's an implication for the storytelling we do in business there, which is you don't have to tell everything. You can leave gaps and people will benefit from those gaps in that, in that they'll feel able to put themselves into that story if you've left some space. So I, I think there's a direct link there with an image needs space, image needs some emptiness to let people in, and the stories we tell in business need some space and some emptiness. And I, I, was, I was doing a project just recently, one of the major retailers, in fact, we've got a person from one of that retailer online right now. Welcome, Nikki. Um, and the, the brief, brief was, a team had got this amazing presentation that they were gonna to take to the board. I think they had 60 or 70 PowerPoint charts. And they were a little bit worried that the board wouldn't really engage with their 60 or 70 PowerPoint charts, quite right. So 
And, and so the, que- the brief to, was can I coach them into turning this into a story? And I think where we've ended up has been really good, but it's, it, give that story space. The board don't need to know every detail. Uh, in that picture, you don't need to know who that person is. You don't need to know how hot the water is. You can work that out for yourself. Um, and it's a stronger story for that absence. Um, so that's, um, it, back to your question was, you know, what, keeping your art separate from your business. Um, I think I draw the lessons. So this, every morning I'm down there taking a photograph. Um, if you're interested in following me, it's called This Is Balmoral. It's on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and it's just a picture every day. It's all it is. I've never run an advert there. I've never promoted anything. It's just a picture. Um, and I, it's, it's my laboratory of learning about my creativity. And I've learned, for example, about the power of persistence, that the act of doing it every day it is really helpful in understanding there will be days where it doesn't go right. There'll be days where it comes together easily, like this morning. Um, there are days when you stumble on stuff. Um, one of my images of a, of a jellyfish uh, got huge feedback. And I was on my way home. I, I hadn't I'd given up, frankly. The light was dreadful and I hadn't seen anything worth taking a photograph of. And I just stumbled upon this jellyfish and I thought it looked gorgeous and, and took a photo in the last couple of minutes of, of taking photographs. So you, you learn that you, you can get stuff from, from almost anywhere. Um, and I quite like those moments when I'm down there thinking, well, I've been here. I, I've now been shooting that one beach for over five years. And every morning I'm down there shooting. So um, the, the question would be, you know, am I ever going to run out of, you know, is it going to go stale? And I don't feel that's happening at all yet. In fact, I feel like I'm kind of scratching the surface. Um, so it shows there's no bottom to the, there's no limit to creativity. And I like those moments when you feel a bit lost and you, and you kind of go, I don't know what to do. And you need that confidence to give yourself to, to say, I'm just going to live with that discomfort, that feeling of I don't know what's going on, I don't know what to do. Um, and things pop out when you allow yourself that bit of pain. So I, it's pain is an interesting thing. You mentioned the word pain. It, it, it's a fact, I think, in creativity. And it's something that we're not accustomed to um, in, in the world of work. Uh, I'd love to hear some people online. I mean, we've heard from Paul, and I love that little list. It's creative is about fear, it's about belief, and it's about seeing. I've talked a bit about pain, and I've talked a bit about um, translating images into stories. What questions do people have? I'm, I'm sure you're full of, full of questions and um, wondering what, what you need. So please post questions. We want to hear from you. We've got lots more we could chat about, by the way, but it's probably more important to hear from anyone out there in, in their bedrooms or, or their spare rooms listening in. Anyone want to? Um, actually, uh, just before we go to the questions, Chris, I just wanted to pick up you know, something you started that thing about space. And I think it's really, it's very, for me, it's very interesting because, you know, as an architect, you know, we're, we're, we're all about uh, spaces. Um, uh, but obvious, often, you know, in, in, until, you know, like, you know, in the last 10 or 20, 20 years, there's been the birth of urban design. And what urban design is about is about the negative spaces, about the spaces between buildings. Uh, you know, previous in a lot of times, you know, there, there was no sort of recognition of it and it was just a building on its lot. Um, but, you know, it, the sort of negative space is, is, is very important. You know, interesting, I mentioned earlier about uh, Betty Edwards drawing on the right hand of the brain. One of the things that, one of the exercises she has, which is really amazing, is about drawing a chair. And when you draw a chair, instead of, you know, it's a three-dimensional object and it, you know, and it, and it bends, your, bends your head. But what she does is she points out the negative spaces. And if you if you look at it, you know, it's actually a series of shapes. And if you just draw those shapes and all and connect them together, then you actually have the silhouette of a chair. So I think that, the, you know, the spacing is really interesting. And just lastly, there was a book on, um, that Osho did, you know, was the, uh, the Indian guru. Um, in fact, it wasn't a book, it was just some of his talkings. And, you know, he did a lot around creativity. And he had this one, one piece where he talked about saying that, you know, you piece people in the West, you know, you, you, you talk about, you know, building these rooms and spaces, but what happens is you, you fill it full of junk, you know, and you have no space, you fill up the space, you know, there's no space. Uh, and you talk about space, but you don't really have it anymore because you're full, 
full of shit, you know. So, so I, I think that whole thing about space is 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 really interesting. I just wanted to touch that before we uh, before we go to the question. So, this this is a really good theme from uh, Kirsten, echoed by Matt. Uh, we'll hear more about storytelling in business and how this ties into art. Um, I'd love to jump in on this one if that's all right. Paul. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess, uh, oh, I think I'm going to have to write a book on this. So it's, it's a short answer. Um, when I teach storytelling in business, I, I think one of the key things is it's very different to reporting. Uh, reporting is going to a bunch of facts, you know, a report, a spreadsheet, a graph, whatever. That's just the data presented there. And storytelling is assembling that in a way which draws the listener in, that makes them interested and in business particularly, encourages them to do something as a result. Um, so for, for my art, which is, which is digital art or photography, um, you can choose to just record what's there if you want. And that's I think what a snapshot does. I've seen a great sunrise, I'm gonna take my phone out, I'm gonna go click and that's gonna be the data that's in front of me. Um, but it, it won't necessarily tell a story. It's, a, it's more of that snapshot would be a reminder where I, I can tell a story. Oh, I've got to tell you about my job this morning. I saw this great sunrise. Here it is. Um, so an, uh, for me, an image has to tell a story. It has to stand up by itself without you standing next to it. Um, if I go back to that image this morning, there was a figure there. His arms were outstretched. He was stretching just before he dived into the water. Um, it's the presence of that person in that image, for me, makes it an image with a story because we're asking ourselves who that is. We're asking ourselves, you know, he's sort of like, a, it's a sort of crucifix thing happening, I think. So there's a, there's a slightly spiritual tone, I think, to that picture. So I can read all sorts of things into that, that picture that go beyond, it was a nice sunrise. Um, and so the same is true business, storytelling in business. Um, you have to draw the listener in by suggesting some connections that will connect up here. And it, it's, it means thinking hard about how people listen rather than just presenting the data, which is what we're encouraged to do so often in business. So that's one of my answers on the link between art and storytelling. It's there's, there's huge learnings between the two. Um, I've got lots more to add though. Paul, do you want to jump in? How, how does art relate to storytelling in business? Yeah. Well, look, I think there's, there's two things: is how does you know how does art relate to storytelling, and how does uh, both those things relate relate to business? Uh, and I think you you know covered it very well. For myself personally, um, I think I might have mentioned it earlier. Um, you know, I, I really struggled with English at school, uh, but I'm now becoming a writer because I'm writing about my paintings and doing the same thing. In some in some way, it's unlocked my brain. Uh, and I suppose it is my belief uh, in terms of art or creativity in business is that. You know, if you practice, if you have a, a practice, whatever it might be, you know, uh, writing or knitting or anything, you're, you're uh, experimenting in a safe space uh, to, to challenge those things about fear and belief and seeing things differently that you can apply to any aspect of business. Um, in, in terms of the storytelling, um, you know, the, the storytelling is, um, you know, my thing is around, you know, presentations and, you uh, you know, as you talked about, you know, 70 data slides, you know, to a board. Um, it really is, you know, like I suppose the art of storytelling to have an engaging thing. I, I, when I do, you know, my, my talks, I might have 140 slides for 45 minutes, but it's probably got a dozen words on them, you know, and they're, it's more of a narrated story, but it's very powerful. So I think that, you know, whatever, whatever it might be that un unleashes uh, or connects you with your inner creativity that you can apply then in a business sense, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, communicate to someone, whether it's communicating in HR or it's communicating to a client or communicating to your boss. So you're honing your skills to be a clearer communicator because, you know, in the practice of architecture, you know, I came to the realization after 20 years that we were in the communication business because we were just communicating ideas to different people in different ways, sketches, working drawings, you know, authorities, things like that. So, you know, and that's all a story. And the way to convince anyone is to tell them the story. So when we do a presentation, we wouldn't go in and go, here's your building. You know, you start with a mood board, you know, and, and you take people through a story. You know, you give them the background, you know, to, to bring them along because people connect with stories. And so um, I, I think it's, you know, I think it's incredibly powerful 
I think it, at times it's hard to actually describe. But Chris, you know, you, you're the better storyteller, so I'll hand back to you. <laughs> That's a stitch up. Thank you, that Paul. Um, got some great questions coming in. Thank you, which which we'll come on to. But I I, I do want to uh, sort of come back on. Or there's an extra point about the link between art, creativity, and storytelling in business. Because people attach huge value to art. Um, sometimes I think people are in awe of it. And, and I think the reason is that art is very personal. And it's a, it's a look inside you. you. The decisions you make when you paint, when you take a photograph, are very revealing about the person who's doing that. And that's why your point about fear, I think, is really strong. Is you, you are showing the world quite a lot of what's inside. And... I think that the translation there into business is that when, when you're storytelling, if you're going to engage a person with your story, if they're going to believe in it and trust in you, they've got to feel you really, really believe it, that you buy into your own story. And so it, I think it teaches you um, to be vulnerable, whether it's vulnerable when you're, whether you're taking a photograph, painting a picture, or telling a story in work. Um, and that can be tough because it's easier, safer, to hide behind a smart suit, uh, a posh business title, um, a PowerPoint deck, to use long words. All, all of these are armory that we can use to protect ourselves from the outside world looking in. Um, so I think, I think that's probably the, mo the, the most poignant connection between art, creativity, and storytelling is, it, is the act of being vulnerable, the act of being open and, and confident enough to share um, share quite a lot of yourself to an audience that you may not know, who may judge you, uh, and to be able to bounce back if it goes wrong or to enjoy it if it, if it goes well. Um, so that, I think, is another very powerful connection between art and storytelling. You know, can I just add one more thing to that list that you had? And uh, uh, Kirsten, I see that you're wanting uh, Chris to answer Kate's question. If I could just have a crack at it first. Um, just as a personal story, I think it's about uh, being authentic, you know, um, and for me, when I started my architectural practice um, 30 years ago, uh, I was also launching my art practice. I had no work. Uh, I had a studio, an art studio on the top floor of this building. And I had an office on the second floor, but I couldn't, I, I felt guilty being in my studio because I didn't want people to know that, that I was an artist. What evolved over the years was I found that when people knew that I was an artist and also knew that I was an architect, one fed off the other. Um, and so, you know, I, it meant that I became a more successful artist because, um, you know, people knew me as an architect and, you know, and, and a lot of art is about, you know, personal connection, as you've also mentioned. But uh, it also then, you know, it gave me probably uh, a, a greater um, reputation than I deserved as a creative force in our practice because I, I was... Um, you know, I was seen as so creative and it also gave me a greater leeway. You know? So, you know, even now, and in one of the questions, and I, I'll hand it to Chris in a minute, because one of the questions that I had to Chris when we, in one of these conversations was, you know, how much of your photography do you bring in your presentations? And his answer to me was very little. Um, so it's very interesting. And, and I've, you know, finding ways to do it. But, you know, I'm still at this challenge that, you know, will people really take me seriously as a thought leader if I'm just also an artist you know and it's it's incredible you know how to meld them together my belief as is unfolding i think whatever you're doing if you're doing what you're doing is authentic then it can it can you know th there's no boundary between the person and the business because uh, yeah. that's what people connect with but I'll, I'll hand back to you chris yeah so I'm, I'm gonna so kate and Kirsten, thank you for the challenge the goal that has been to answer that question so i will do that right now um um but i'd love to build on this idea about how you, how you bring actual art into the world of business. Um, so the, the challenge from Kate and echoed by Kirsten was, it's all very well saying that storytelling is personal to you and art is personal to you, but in business, the, the, the stuff is not personal to you, it's a business thing. Um, and my answer to that is bullshit. If you're communicating an idea in business, be it launching a new product or restructuring a team or reviewing the expenses policy, what matters is you and the way you feel about it and the journey you've been on. If you're talking to a business audience and you're authentic, you're vulnerable, you're open about the ups and downs of the journey, the scars that you've, you've accumulated on the way to getting to your idea, 
they'll believe you, they'll buy into you, they'll want to take action on what you say. If you're just saying, treating it as a, something that's not connected to you, I don't think they'll buy into you. They, they won't buy what you've got. Uh, so one, one of the messages I have for people in storytelling in business is, don't present a snapshot. We tend to go, here's the answer. I, I've done all this work, trust me, it's great work. And the answer which you're gonna have to believe is that we do this, sign off this budget or buy this new program or something. And people tend to gonna go, oh yeah, thanks for, uh, I'll, I'll decide for myself, thank you very much. Whereas if you show the journey, if, you, if you're raw about, you know, we had moments where we weren't sure if we were going to do this, or we, we, we're really excited about this because we can see how much it will deliver. You're revealing yourself, you're being authentic, and, and people will then come on that journey with you. So I, I don't see a difference myself. I think that it's vital in business that we're open, we're authentic, and we're real. Uh, and the, the struggle we all have is that we're trained not to be. We're trained to use jargon. We're trained to, uh, trained to hide behind the department's point of view on this. Or we're, we're trained to defer to people who look more senior than us and so on. Um, that's the struggle. Um, but I don't see a difference. I think authenticity, vulnerability, personal, the personal point of view are the key to business storytelling. Did that answer the question, Kate and Kirsten? Thanks, both. Um, actually, just, just in terms of just to... I add to that a little bit, and it's not so much about the authenticity, but it's more about the acceptance of creativity in business. You know, I started this process ten years ago, and I was so fearful about calling it creativity, so I called it about innovation. You know, or, and and that's where design thinking came from because you know people are scared to do creativity. Um, mind you, now when I talk to engineers, I call, talk about ingenuity, ingenuity um, which is you know about being clever and original. Um, but the reality is that, you know, I, I've been talking to an international um, law firm about doing some work and they said, oh yeah, as part of the leadership program internationally, uh, we've hired this consultant, we're all painting our, our life. You know, we're doing a painting of our life. So you've got all these heads of these, uh, you know, international uh, law firm. So I think there's a real um, uh, level of acceptance coming. And I, what I'm really interested in about is because, you know, there is, I think there's so much creativity going on in the world. Um, was pointed out to me, you know, recently that, you know, the Roaring Twenties followed the Spanish flu uh, and, and, the, and the First World War. Um, you know, I think there's, you know, there are people, you know, at home that say, you know, I'm going to pick up watercolours when I retire, but they're doing it now because they're at home. And so I, I'm really interested to see what's going to uh, happen, you know, over the next six months to a year, whether you know, they, it sort of broadens up further. But uh, I know through the thought leaders that I've met, you know, through the, the pro program that both Chris and I have been in, um, you know, there, there are some people out there, they're just, you know, full on creativity, you know, working for the, you know, the, the biggest brands in the country. So it certainly has changed in the last 10 years and there's a great acceptance of it. Uh, it's about thinking differently. I've got a question for everyone who's dialing in and it's about the word creativity and I'll, I'll explain what the question is about so I, but I launched my practice on this side of a little training called, program called creativity at work and it teaches people how to use creative tools in the white heat of the workplace and it went off all right but the thing that people buy more and more nowadays is that storytelling for business um, and the creativity thing has always been less important than storytelling and I wonder if the word creativity is a bit scary in business. People find it difficult to find a place for it. Storytelling's okay because it's about communication. Innovation's great because that's about new products, new services, new procedures, and so on. But creativity is a bit of a dark beast, and you don't want that strange thing at work. So my question to people online is, am I right? Is, is creativity a weird thing to bring into the workplace? What people want is what it delivers. Or actually, could you say, yeah, we're a creative business. We, we thrive on creativity. And I'm not talking about ad agencies here. I'm talking about any business. Any feedback on that word, creativity? Oh, I might not have it yet. Ah, great. Thank you, Bridget. Creativity introduces risk. Creativity needs the same marketing agency uh, to give to the other. Uh, um, the ability for those in power to give agency to the other. It scares me. Yeah, ah, ah this is gold. Thank you. Um, it, it, uh, Samantha, it, it's a lack of understanding. I, I agree. And maybe this all relates back, Paul, to your point is, you know, if you're being creative and you're singing, somebody slices you down, you can't sing, mind it, don't sing it. 
that's your last brush with creativity. So if somebody else is going to bring creativity in the business, it's, oh, it's a, it's a wild animal unleashed to disrupt our business. It means risk. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I personally, I'm very conscious of balancing the way I communicate what I do uh, to business people because I don't want to bring risk. I want to bring energy. I want to bring answers. I want to bring excitement. Um, but yeah, the, I don't think any of this would be eating very well. I'd be a lot skinnier than I am today if my offer is I'm going to bring risk into your business. Um, and no risk, no reward. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about uh, my... I, I, when I also take a photograph each morning, I, I swim in the ocean. Another reason I popped down to the beach this morning. Um, and I started swimming um, because I was scared of sharks. And I get asked a lot because I swim in the open ocean. There's no, no kind of nets or anything around there. And we swim offshore. This morning I would have been uh, seven or 800 meters away from the beach. Um, and the reason I specifically started that was because of my fear of sharks. I wanted to train my brain to get over that fear. I know that statistically the fear is unfounded, um, but the brain turns sharks into this crazy dark monster. Um, so it was a, and now I just love swimming in the sea. Um, I've never seen a shark. But I, I think the idea of risk is really interesting. The feedback you're giving me about creativity is about risk. It doesn't, risk means reward. I, I like the idea of a bit of a risk. Uh, a lot of my artworks are quite risky. Um, I don't mind, in truth, if people are offended by them. What I mind with my artworks is people ignore them. Um, if they think they're terrible, that's great. Um, if they love them, that's great too. But being ignored, now that would be terrible. <laughs> Paul, how about you? What do you think about um, risk? Creativity means risk, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a risky word in the world of business. It, we should. Yeah, look, I think it is. I think that, you know, we, we all say that, you know, we, we love ideas. Um, you know, businesses, they love ideas, they love creativity. But look, it does come with risk. Uh, and it, so it does, someone said earlier, you need the same, you know, branding, branding consultant as innovation. Um, I, think, I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's so, so true. Um, but, you know, but I think it's so important. What we did in, you know, when I had large act architectural practice, we had 50 people. Now, you know, people think that architects are, you know, creative it's you know it's not all beer and skittles um you know it, you know as you go up the chain you need you get more and more creativity you need a point where you do less and less creativity and you become a clock architect um <laughs> you, know, you no longer have the uh you know the creative side of it but you know we still had you know admin people we had you know young drafts people just doing you know drawing all day long on the computer screen so we really did things you know that to really we, we had a, a a personal development program that we that we subsidised, and we had life drawing in the, in the tea room with a with a model. We we did singing lessons. We had a dozen of us do singing lessons. And again, it's you know it's really just about you know it's a relatively safe space. Um, so it's actually having that safe space uh, to you know to let people you know put their toe in the water um, yeah. because uh, you know when they see that you know no one got no one got hurt or didn't get to hurt too badly. Um, so we did circus as well. Um, you know, it, it does actually open it up. So, so look, I, I think it involves, it is involved risks. I think it, you know, people are scared of ideas and it comes back to that thing as we've started because it's new, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's genetically programmed into us um, that, you know, it's why we, you know, we survived by not going into that dark cave where the, the tooth tiger was, you know, and it's the same thing that we, that we experienced. So, um, so yeah, I think, um, you know, it is, it is there. It's, um, I, I do have a model and I see we're running out of time, you know, uh, I have a thing called creativity irons. And so uh, it's just a play on words, but it's inspiration, action and expression. Uh, but they live with, uh, they're sort of the positive, but they live with a negative and inspiration is distraction, action is procrastination and expression is trepidation. The reality is that those things uh, live together. You know, they, they are the constant tension, you know, and they, and they not only have tension this way, they have tension as soon as you have an idea, you're fearful about, oh my God, you know, I've got an idea for a talk. Oh my God, I haven't had that talk. I'm in a cold sweat already. So uh, the, the thing to know is that, you know, that, that, that there is fear uh, in these things and that's where they live. Um, and it's the reason that many artists actually, they don't understand this in their own work. So, you know, it comes with anxiety. So they self-medicate and they become alcoholics or drug addicts. 
uh, they don't stand back and go, oh, I'm creating something, I'm feeling anxious, that's normal. You know, they go, oh my God, you know, I, you know I'm psychotic, I better, you know, take, take drugs. So, so without, uh, without paintbrushes or cameras, we'd all be wrecks. We have to have yeah, these tools. So, yeah. yeah. So, so the thing is that, you know, and that's the core of it. And, but then on the outside, there's the, you know, the ultimate and there's, and there's the black hole. And the black hole from distraction goes to addiction. The black hole from prescription becomes to uh, immobilization and uh, from trepidation comes to isolation. And that's where you don't want to be, you know, and that's the draw of the black hole. Uh, so, um, I have a, an idea, we, we're getting towards the end of our time. And one question I have for everybody listening in is, should we, should we do more of this? And if so, what kind of topics should we discuss? And Paul, you've just given me the perfect springboard. One suggestion I have for another topic would be to talk about um, creativity and mental health. That, that if once, if without these things you go into black holes, but with these things, they're good for your spirit, they're good for your soul, they help you see things differently. Uh, so we can look at that. There's a theme, Mandy and, and Kirsten were talking about space for creativity, which I believe passionately in that you need to give yourself space. So we can talk about role of space for creativity, or there may be something you want to hear more of. So before we wrap up, please give us your thoughts and our topics or people that you might want to hear from which link are creativity, storytelling and business. Give us your, your feedback, please. Yeah, how to convince the workplace. Thank you, Nikki, for that very much. Yeah, it's, it's a really moot point. If it means risk to some people, um, how do you do that? Lovely, thank you. Creativity allows businesses to grow and move, move quickly. Thank you, Elise. Uh, Noel, by the way, if you're still listening, I'm conscious you've asked a couple of questions and we've ignored them both. We will capture all of your comments and we'll, we'll use them. So thank you for your comments. And I'm sorry we didn't get a moment to, to get back to you. I remember one of your questions, Noel, was, you know, where does vision come from? Uh, so seconding Nikki's point, that's good. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Noel. <laughs> Please do good. Um, uh, how to keep creativity in the workplace and inspire it, even if you don't have huge amounts of it. Troy, brilliant. I mean, I think everyone has huge amounts of it. It's just got to be unlocked. And as Paul said, you can only unbecome what you're not. Um, so, yeah, we can talk about how... Uh, Chris, how to just, uh, no. I, I'm just going to make one comment just on here on creativity. So um, we work very closely with uh, Ogilvy Common Health. And what they've recently done is they've come up with this unique methodology where uh, based upon survey done amongst healthcare professionals, they've actually come up with this science which actually backs up that creativity. Where does the eye go first when you see a particular page? Uh, what are the colors that really resonate with you? And it's all backed up by science. And that's the reason why I feel that uh, they're, they're, they're clearly interlinked. Great. Uh, thank you so much for that, Noel. Um, could, could we have a chat offline? I'd love to know more about it. And uh, it's no surprise at all that, that the sort of rigorous scientific basis for this it's, it's awesome. Absolutely. You make it good with a camera or come with a paintbrush. That definitely has, has um, it's deeper than that. I really appreciate that. So I'll drop your line if I may. Maybe we could pick up on that in a future thing. I'm yeah, not, definitely. See, Kirsten's giving us some feedback. Let's talk about where we are now, how creative thinking is. Brilliant, thank you. Bridget, uh, what about a neuroscience thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We need to talk about neural pathways. I'm passionate about that. The brain is lazy. It doesn't like creativity naturally. So how do you get across those neural pathways? Um, that is brilliant. Um, we're very nearly um, at time. Um, Firstly, to everyone that's tuned in, I want to say a big thank you for tuning in. Uh, this has been an experiment. It's, it's a step up from what Paul and I have been doing regularly anyway. Um, personally, I'm delighted by the way it's gone. I feel like we've had a really, I've learned a lot from you, Paul, right in this session. It wasn't scripted or rehearsed, so uh, that's, a, that's a real good thing. Well, I, I've, I've learned a few things about you, Chris. I didn't know that you had a calendar, and I didn't actually know you wrote a book. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I have to do some work between the next one to get some clarity on my own. Um, but uh, <laughs> maybe next time I'll actually show you some of my art. It's uh, it's uh, there's, there's mountains of it in the basement. So, um, but so thank you everyone who joined in. Thank you to Paul. We're going to digest all of your comments and feedback. Um, I'm feeling like we should definitely do more of this. Maybe we'll bring in other uh, creatives to kind of speak. 
Um, you've got with some great ideas. Um, Paul, do you want to say anything? To, oh, and if, if you want to give us some business, I, I teach storytelling, I teach creativity, I think, well, do, do drop me a note, but I'd love, love to help you out in the business sense and perhaps talk about storytelling and creativity in, in the workplace. Paul, anything you want to add? Well, if, and if Chris can't help you, you can always contact me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely uh, good. <laughs> yeah, no, but listen, I, I just want to say thanks to everyone. I, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, as Chris said earlier, it was just our private chats and we thought, oh, well, you know, maybe people might be interested. So look, as I said, I, I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, and I hope to see you back here when we, uh, when we do the next one.